Hi, uh, my name is Mackie. I'm 22 years old. I always have to fucking think about that. I think when you asked to introduce myself on your last podcast, I almost said my age wrong again. Yeah. Um, I don't blame you. I'm like that as well. Yeah. Uh, just I'm not really doing much. We're in isolation. I've just been playing games, reading books, watching anime, and uh, not been making shit because I don't have any resources to make stuff. But I'm still kind of living my best life. So I'm vibing. So, you, you're not making stuff right now? Yeah. This podcast is worthless and I, I don't know if I want to talk to you. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, you can switch off. Right? How, uh, how pivotal, like, pivotal, pivotal is uh, making stuff to your life? Like, is that something that you, you are really passionate about? Or do you just kind of do it as like a, I don't know. It's almost, do you treat it more like a job or do you treat it more like an a enjoyable hobby? Well, I, I started doing it for my... No, that's selfish. I started doing it for myself because I was making stuff that I couldn't find anywhere else. And then it kind of went from there. All my friends started telling me to do it. So I started doing it for myself and then did it for my friends. Realistically, even now that we have a website where I'm selling stuff, it's still not really like a job. It's just more of like, if you want it, I'll make it for you. It's enjoyable to do, so I'll happily make it for you. Right. So I definitely see more of it as a hobby than... And to get an income, because it's not like it makes a lot of money, but it's still great to do. It's a lot of fun as well. Do you not think it's something you could probably like make money off of? Yeah, definitely. You just have to be really, you have to be really clever and know how to hide your tracks as well. Especially if you're doing like bootleg stuff, it's all copyrighted. Yeah, um, that's the worst thing. So, how did you even get into it? Like, how did you discover that this was a thing that people did and then that you started doing? Um. That's a good question, actually. I don't okay. know how you just roll with that. How you just come up with these questions? Didn't even think of them. Natural um, interviewer. <laughs> I don't even know. Man, fuck. It was I, just one of those things you kind of found yourself in. <clears throat> yeah, it just, it just kind of happened. Uh, it was just like because I collect a lot of PlayStation Two games, and there was a lot of games that I wanted like T-shirts of and like hoodies of, and I never had them. And it's not like they're actually available because they're so obscure and mm. just forgotten about. So, uh, one of the first T-shirts I just I just grabbed. There's a guy up where I buy my T-shirts from. He's up Falkirk because I live in, we live in Scotland. If anyone doesn't know, but we I go to Falkirk and buy yeah. I'd buy three T-shirts for a fiver. That's how much he sells me my shirts for, and then. I would buy fabric markers and just hand draw the stuff. So it's quite a lot of trial and error in it, but I drew a logo of my favourite game and then varnished it and just kept it the way it was and it was nice and pretty. I was really happy with it. And then I posted it online and got a lot of comments from people saying like, this is mad good, like you should keep doing it. Yeah. So I kept doing it and just started doing like more games. <clears throat> and then a lot of friends were asking for stuff and uh, just went from there. I knew a couple of people who were doing like gaming inspired merchandise as well as like anime inspired one of our friends does it as well so I, he kind of took off well, took off with it but he went he takes it proper serious and I really respect him for it because he's what I do is just kind of like I'll take a game that I like and just do the logo and do the company whereas what he'll do is like he'll put his whole spin on it and design mm. it his way and add his logo and stuff so it's more of like an actual brand right. whereas Mine is just blatant copyright, <laughs> so it's actually pretty bad. But right. that's 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 my that's the appeal of it to me. So is everything is your process behind making all of them literally just hand drawn? Yeah, most of them not anymore because I found a way to print. But some of them some seem like insanely are. detailed just to be like hand drawn. Or am I like insane for saying that? I think maybe the ones that you've seen. Uh, might have been printed because like the the recent ones that I've been posting they've all been printed or right. the one I posted on my Instagram last night I painted that like a year ago but there's not too much detail not too much I think I mean they say I, I know I couldn't do it right and I'm not saying like that's the threshold between like undetailed and detailed is like if I can do it but that doesn't seem like the average person could just sort of go like oh I could just do that do you know what I mean it seems like super delicate details and like quite intricate like mm. even though you're saying like they're they're kind of not but then is that just like your like artistic mind saying that because it's maybe easier yeah, for you than it would be for me 
Mm. I think it's mainly as well, like I said earlier, it was a lot of, it was a lot of trial and error. So mm. I used to buy a lot more t-shirts and I would just think like, right, this three I could practice on and I don't really care if I fuck up because it cost me like a fiver. And then I could like print over it and you'd never see it. And right. then it was, I'll, tr- I'll practice on these three and then like these three I'll actually do like a hand-drawn t-shirt. Right. So that's how I always thought of it. So I kind of worked up and got used to it. Um, as well as like a lot of the time was like using like light boxes. So like printing out a design of like a like a sketch, say or like a, a manga panel or something. And then using like a light box and then basically like tracing it onto a t-shirt. Right. So like that gives you a lot of detail. Like I'm not, I'm not fucking, I'm not that good. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably like the easiest way to do it is like tracing it. You're being modest. You should be like hyping this up, being creating a company out of this, like building it up, building your empire. I'm not an entrepreneur, mate. I can't do it. Um, do you, have you always kind of like been creative or like creatively minded and artistic like that? Uh, maybe I would a little bit. Not as definitely not as much as what I do now. Uh, I used to do a lot of skateboarding with my friend. We would order like scooter grip was like a lot thinner than like skateboard grip right. so we would order like hunters and hunters like different colored grip and then we'd buy like paint pens and we'd cut all the grip up and do like mad crazy art and then like draw all over it and paint all over it and stuff right. so i would say that was as creative as i went i never really went outside that box i remember when i was younger i used to be obsessed with the idea of having a website but like i never had anything to make a website of so it was just a lot of the time, like my mum has a business, so I was like begging her to make a website. I was like, oh, I'd love to do it, I'd love to do it. And then it would just look like absolute shit. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those things, everything is trial and error until you find your... Like, yeah. Were you just like heavily inspired by iCarly? I mean, maybe. I think that's <laughs> probably what it is, yeah. Um, so I've yeah. i a lot of these skateboards under here, but... A lot of what, sorry? Mean, all my skateboards that I drew on, I could probably bring them out and show them on the calls. Yeah. For those watching this on YouTube, this is a little <laughs> sneak preview. If you're listening to this, you're an idiot. You should be watching it. This is a visual <laughs> podcast. Oh, God. It's got a pain to get them out. Like. I regret saying that because way more people listen to this than watch it. I'm sorry, guys. If you're, if you're okay. listening to this, you're the OG. I love you guys. <laughs> Here's one here. So this is a this is a welcome day. Uh, they're a skate company, right? So my mate did this one and he cut all the grip up. So it's all cut up here. Um, he's got like he's drew and coloured all over this bit right here. And this bit's actually really funny. I can't remember her name. Uh, I'm demonetized now. Sheet. What? I'm demonetized now. No, she's, she's not. <laughs> there. She's not naked. But, um, he got a sheet of clear grip, and it's a. Uh, it's an actress that was in Saved by the Bell. <laughs> so he just he, he printed up a photo of her and then put a sheet of clear grip on it. So she's solidified there forever. Such an obscure... Um, I don't know. Obscure. You can fucking pick anyone. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of like the thing that sells on eBay for like millions when you become famous. <laughs> uh, this one as well. We made this one. Uh, a lot of pink and blues and then he cut all that up so it's all shaped it's like an actual nightmare to ride on because you've got no <laughs> grip at all same as up there uh, I've got one more this one's actually my favourite because I was skating this last. one uh, last year oh wait I've actually, got, I've actually got two more so this is um, oh my god I'm probably clipping your audio so much this is a uh, a Brand called Dino. Uh, fucking, what are you talking about? Alien Workshop, right? That's the skate brand. <laughs> and they did a collaboration with a band called Dinosaur. So their their whole logo is just everything to do with aliens and like right. fucking. We still believe in that shit. But uh, I cut all this out in strips, and then I gave it to my girlfriend and two of our friends and they just drew all over it. They just drew graffiti all over it. and then I skated it for like two years. Cuties. Really <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, I like it. So yeah, I would say that was like as creative as, as I used to be. I would say arguably only the reason I'm creative <laughs> as I am is because of my girlfriend, I would probably say. 
because she she's like an artist. She does a lot of art. She's a like well into art. But uh, what what does she? What's her medium? What do you mean? Like what what what's her? Uh, does she paint? Draw? Does she create zines? <laughs> like what's her thing? This. She does a lot of sketching. She does a lot of uh, painting as well. Pretty Just all round creative, right? Yeah, That's she does take a bath at it. But yeah, she's definitely a main inspiration for me to be as creative as I am because she just keeps pushing me, which is really nice. That is wholesome content. Right there. And I'm fucking, I'm like so out of breath after bringing all those boards. Like, <laughs> they catch my breath. Isolation is doing you dirty. I feel like that's like one of those things where like if you did become famous, your Wikipedia page would be like, uh, when he was young, he used to like make his own bespoke skateboards <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> um, oh my God. I'm gonna say something stupid about that. Um, but yeah, she was always the one that was. Um, so like when I was saying like I was making stuff for myself, she was always the one that was saying, "Oh, you could make something from this. You could post this online, and people would buy." It. And I would always just be like, "Oh, you're you're being silly." She's right. The more I, people, she I know, the more people told me. The more I was just like, I don't know why I didn't believe her in the first place, because she's never wrong. So <laughs> it was just, it took that reality check to be like, I could probably make some money off of that. You're like, uh, I feel like you must be in trouble with her because you're like taking all the good boyfriend boxes right now and be like, oh yeah, she's so great. She just encouraged me. She's so nice. She's always right. <laughs> no, she's, no, I'm just being honest, man. I'm, I'm, that's just what she's like. Put my wee lamp on. She's kind of, Oh, I like uh, it. I love the contrast in the face, the dark light, looks good. <laughs> <laughs> no, people I mean, people watching this podcast are getting all the good stuff, they're getting the skateboards, they're getting the wee light. <laughs> I'm, giving, I'm giving you the visuals, mate, that's what you need. <laughs> no, me and, my, me and my girlfriend are good, we've been calling a lot, we've been having a laugh. I think we've actually spoke more in quarantine than we do when we're both at work. So yeah. It's been, it's been really, yeah, it's been and I told her that I was coming out to do this, and she was like, well, excited. She was like, well, I'll give me something to listen to. Oh, yes, I'll have my first listener. This lady's an cast. We all listen to it. <laughs> Stop, man. Making me blush. Um, do you, uh, how are you finding, like, the sort of, like, switch to, like, an old digital platform right now for, like, FaceTime or, like, talking to people and stuff like that? Do you find it really uh, strange to not have that sort of, like, more physical and person interaction. Yeah, definitely. Me, uh, me and Jack, who's in Nest, we used to do a different podcast. Uh, what was called Wolf Slayer came in. Mm. The whole basis was because two of the other guys were from England, so one of them was from Nottingham, and the other one was from like Southampton. Right. So it was just impossible to ever meet up or do anything. Yeah. So that was completely digital. That was all over Skype, but Skype sounds horrendous. So you could imagine how bad it was. Uh, there was only like four or five episodes and then we just kind of gave up because it just sounded that bad so mm. like the Instagram is still there you could, you could it's still sitting at like a hundred shout out to the Instagram know. you want to check it out <laughs> <laughs> I still get like uh, people messaging me like yo what's happened with Wolf Slayer mm. I don't know it doesn't exist anymore oh. it's <laughs> Yeah, I find it really strange, like, not being able to, like, properly make eye contact with people and stuff like that, and, like, yeah. you know, it's especially for, like, a like an interview-based, like, situation, it's like, mm -hmm. like I don't know, there's, there's a definite disconnect, it doesn't uh, feel, but I'm powering through because there's awesome people like you that I need to talk to, and I'm not letting, <laughs> I'm not wasting any time. That's um, how we feel as well at yeah. Nest, because we... When, because when we started, we were just like, we're always going to do it face-to-face uh, -face in the practice room for like three hours. So that's just how we've always went with yeah. it. And it's that way where it's like, that's easily the best way to do it. Like, it's not even an argument. Like face-to-face -face contact is the best way for an interview situation. Or just uh, to gush about stuff with your friends because you can see who's going to talk. You know what's happening. It's like so much more easy to like structure. Yeah. So uh, we're kind of, kind of hitting like a blank spot right now we don't really know what to do I think we're just going to bite the bullet and do over Skype or do over Discord or something but it's not something we really want to do but we do still want to bring out content so it's just going to have to happen you know? mm -hmm. yeah yeah face to face <sighs> like face to face is like god tier and then you've got like video call phone call text and then like 
I don't know, Morse code or whatever. That's like bomb to you. <laughs> but yeah, definitely in person, there, there's nothing like... It's just that immediacy, like, if you're... Uh, especially if there's like four people, you can't really do like an online call where like three or four uh, people and it doesn't feel like everyone's just kind of like speaking over each other all the time. Over. Um, yeah. That's what I hate about it. It was so bad. Especially because one of the guys we used to do it with is very opinionated. <laughs> so if you were to start to talk with something, you would jump right in there. It's just, as soon as you hear somebody talking over you in your call, you just, you just stop talking. Yeah, it feels it's really strange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's it. like, yeah, that, that lack of like, I, I mean, I don't want to get like too guru, but it feels like there's a lack of like proper energy, so you can't really bounce back and forth. You don't yeah. really know like the, the, the situation or what, I don't know, how people are really reacting to something. Yeah. No, um, I, you're right. Bang on. It's hard to read the room. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, you were straight edge, and now you're not straight edge. Do you want to talk about about that and what what the the flow of that? What happened there? Yeah, sure. So I'm guessing yeah. you were not straight edge, then you went straight edge, and now you're not straight edge again, unless you well, were raised straight edge. I mean, I guess wait, everyone's raised straight edge. Well, uh, that's what I was gonna say. It kind of falls into that category for me because I was like. I don't know what age I was. It was like primary school, like primary six and seven. I was always like that weird kid who just listened to any music because I grew up punk music from my dad. Mm, but right. he listens to like UK punk, and I'm I'm more of like US punks, Youth is a Day, and like Minor Threat and all that kind of stuff. So I grew up on that punk, just like living off YouTube videos and YouTube suggestions, and then like hearing the song. Uh, Straight Edge by a minor threat and thinking what the fuck is that and it was at that time where like going into like first and second year it's like everyone start you go into like first year and everyone develops those groups of people where it's like you've got the cool kids and then you got like the really uncool kids and I was just that weird like middle ground where I was like I'm definitely not an absolute weird I'm a bit fucking weird but I'm not one of them and I'm definitely not cool enough so I was just like I'll stay in the middle I'll be, the, I'll be one of the in-betweeners that's what I'll be <laughs> And then I didn't really have any friends who liked heavy music, bar like two or three, but they all liked like, just, like heavy metal when I was like hardcore and metal and metal core and stuff like that. And then started just, just going, to, going on to like local gigs and local shows and then finding out about like more about Straight Edge. And it was like that, that time where all the cool people would be going to parties and like drinking and all that stuff, and it was never really appealed to me, so I didn't really care about it and never indulged myself in it. Right. But it wasn't like, oh, what the fuck are you drinking for? I was never really that mm-hmm. opinionated about it. I was just like, if you do what you want, you do what you want. It's not for me. Because I grew up skateboarding with like a borderline like substance abuser and just didn't didn't care. Like it was his life. He could do what he want. I wasn't going to tell him to stop. But at the same time, like I'm sitting there like, you really should stop because yeah. you're going to kill yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was straight edge even when I was pals with him. He never questioned me being edge, so I never questioned him abusing mm. substances. So it was just like a two-way stream, just went with it. Uh, so yeah, I kind of grew up, I like not idolizing straight edge, but just didn't drinking didn't appeal to me. It was like everyone thought that was what made you cool in high school, and I didn't really agree with that because I none of my friends would drink or anything, so I just didn't really, it didn't it didn't appeal. I didn't really care. Right. So it just, just didn't bother. I didn't have like a, I didn't, I didn't have a first sip of alcohol until I was like nineteen years old or something. And like my mum always just like laugh at me, not laugh at me like that way. It's like a playful laughter where she's like, oh, loser. Just a bit different. <laughs> What's that? She's like a loser. <laughs> like, well, essentially, yeah. She was like, oh, you know, if you're gonna have a drink, oh, all right. She'd always like poke fun at it. I didn't really bother me. So I knew she was just having a laugh. Mm. But uh, yeah, it definitely felt. Like an outsider from that perspective, because I didn't drink it, I didn't grow up drinking, as yeah. if that's some sort of like normality in the situation where you're fucking fourteen, you should be drinking. Yeah, I guess it is, um, it's a strange like uh, culture, isn't it? Where it's like mm-hmm. it's normal to do the thing that's actually like non-beneficial for you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like completely normal to just like, like not to fully criticize, but it's, it's basically just normal to poison yourself all the time. Yeah, that, just uh, that's so exactly odd. what it is. Yeah. yeah, you're putting poison in your body. Yeah. yeah. Um, so wait, what are like the the fundamental aspects of straight edge? No drinking, no smoking, no drugs. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Is a it? lot of people argue it's like 
no sex for marginal shit. I was like, fuck up. <laughs> I know, mate, it's a shop. It's essentially like no drugs, no alcohol. Like, simple as that. Right. That's the way. You live your life clean. Right. You walk it on. This cross yeah. is my escape. All that shit. Fair enough. I mean, if that, that floats your butt, then why not? Um, but, more importantly, why not straight edge? <laughs> I feel like well, that's, that's better gossip right here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't mock it in any way. I don't know. You are saying that I said something about straight edge people be losers. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I genuinely... If I ever said that, I don't ever remember doing it. But, like, I... When I was going to, like, local shows, it was, like, me and my buddy Sean. We were straight edge. And uh, it was a really funny story. He broke edge. And he, like... Me and him were really chatting about it. And he felt really, really <laughs> shit. He was like, ah, oh, I can't believe I've done that. Like, what am I going to do in my life? I was like, just claim edge again. Like, as long as you make that commitment to like not do it again, it's not really a big deal. Yeah. Who cares? There's a lot of like elitist people who will be like, if you break edge, you're never going to be edge again. Whereas I, I'm just like, Sean. I think Sean just looked at me that way, where like I'd live my life that clean. So he was like, I'm going to go by what he said. So I was just like, go edge again. Who cares? Do what you want to do. Like, and nobody's going to criticize you. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> then. He claimed edge again. Me and him would go to shows, we'd be edge. And they didn't really know many people who were straight edge. There's a couple of other people who were straight edge, but like they kind of like faded in the obscurity and you never like heard from them again. But, oh no, I didn't really have anyone to look up to who was straight edge. And I'm not meaning the reason I broke edge is because I had like a lack of like somebody to look up to. Because again, it's all my decision, it's all my choice. But I would say, I don't know. Just the lack of it, the lack of it being there, it just kind of made it feel not important, but I just kind of lost my way with it. Right. And uh, I'm not one of those people who breaks edge and just became a fucking alky or like a drug addict or anything, something like that. Because I've known a lot of people who are like that. Yeah, yeah. But I remember, I just remember, I remember getting to an age where I was 19 and then. Uh, I was like, I've, I would say I've had my fun with it. I'm not, I'm not sitting in a pub like gasping for a drink like I fucking need this drink. I need some booze. I didn't really care for it, but I got to an age where I was like, I've had my fun with it. Like I respect how I definitely like admire myself in a weird way for how long I managed to do it. So I'm like, oh, I've had my time. Like I don't, I'm fine with it. I'll, right. I'll happily go to the edge. There was some times where I thought. If I was to break edge, I would hate it. I'd be like, I, I don't know, I would probably hate myself for it. But I think it's like the more older I got and the more mature I got, it's like just knowing that I'd be able to accept it. But I'm fine with it, I don't mind. And I still have a lot of really close straight edge friends. I have a lot of like straight edge vegan friends. I think it's great. Like I love that I love that it's still a thing and it's definitely like significant to hardcore. So I'm mm-hmm. glad it's still there. <laughs> It was interesting you said uh, straight edge vegan because I feel like that obviously that does kind of go hand in hand. But uh, I want to first of all clarify: I have nothing against people that are straight edge. Um, but it seems that there are that kind of like small group of people that kind of do ruin it for the rest, and they are so elitist that it makes it look bad. Um, no, yeah, there's hundreds of people like that. Which is kind of like the same with any like movement with like vegan. Uh, the vegan That's movement, awesome. there's like that small group of people that just put everyone else off and they end up doing more wrong for it than good. Mm. Um, and it's unfortunate that usually the loudest voices, well, always the loudest voices are the ones to be heard, but the loudest voices are usually the ones that are most obnoxious and annoying and the worst ones to hear. Well, it's the people yeah. who are more humbled and genuine that mm. can like make a difference and, and impact people's lives and are genuinely yeah, no, more careful. You're spot on, man. I remember, I remember going to festivals with my cousin, and my cousin's like, he's like a big metalhead. He doesn't really listen to like hardcore. And going to festivals with like him and his friends, like some of them, some of his friends are like, like they're bringing like hundreds of drugs in with them, and uh, like them like telling them that I'm like straight edge, it's like immediately like looking down on you. It's like, oh, you're straight edge. You're a fucking idiot. Like, why would you do that? Like, that's so fucking gay and stuff like that. Bearing in mind, this is like 2010, so people like don't care about calling you gay. It's like it's just like it's just like a describing word in that day and age. So it's like I'm literally being called gay because I'm straight edge. It's like right, okay then. That really shows volumes about the kind of people that you can't like mm-hmm. that you say. These volumes about the image it 
gets created for itself from those people who have the loudest mouths. So I got distracted. Did you say volumes? I think I did. Shout out to volume that. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you picked up. <laughs> um, I want to jump back to t-shirts for a second. What uh, Generally, what's your inspiration? I know that like, video games is a direct uh, inspiration for like, obviously, as you said, you kind of like rip off some stuff. Um, but is there anything that you oh, yeah, find? It's, it's just clear ripping off. It's not even inspo. It's just I'm literally taking the design <laughs> a logo for myself. Have you ever been inspired to like do something out with that and like create a T-shirt that's like completely from your own brain and your own inspirations without being like characters that exist, logos that exist, titles that exist? Mm, not really. No. Um, Everything that I design is mainly based on something. Like, it's based on a right. game or based on a film. Right. Uh, that is definitely something I lack, is that creativity to design something. Like, I well, not design something. I design a lot, but I don't design something that's all hand-drawn by me. Right. That's definitely something, that's something that I want to get into. I'm not, like, like, my girlfriend, for instance, she can... You could tell her to draw something and she'll just sit down and draw it. Right. And then it's like, or you could tell her to create something and mm. she'll create like a character. And it's like, it's just really easy for somebody like her. But for somebody like me, I'm definitely not that clever. Because I, I, if you were to tell me to draw somebody, I'm instantly going to think about drawing like Leon Kennedy from Resident Evil. I just think of drawing somebody else. I can't, right. I can never think of drawing somebody who's unique mm. in any way. So that's, that's definitely something I lack. Not fair enough. Um, I mean, it's just like everyone has like their own kind of realm, I guess, and what mm. they're good at. Um, have you got anything like you want to do? Anything like specific you want to like jump into next once you've got the supplies to do so? Uh, for like upcoming designs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I need to. As soon as we're out of lockdown, I need to get more t-shirts and I need to get my paint. Not paying to get my ink, sorry. So wait, what is it you actually oh. use? It? An ink, like a... Like, what, what is it? The <laughs> if I'm hand-drawn, right? I've got it all here. If I'm hand-drawn, I usually use these. It's a brand, I don't know, called like Posca or something? Yeah, Posca. So they do like, they do like paint inside pens, pretty much like a paint pen. Right. And like, the reason I found out about it is because my girlfriend and a lot of her friends used to like, carry them around and they would like go like if not really graffiti they would like come up with like tags and they would like draw their tags everywhere so like i would use i'd like she introduced me to these so basically what i would do is i would use like this which is just like a fabric marker right so i would design or i say i would like take my design and draw my whole design on my t-shirt and then if anything has any color i just use my paint pens right. and then from there just varnish over it and then that kind of like coats it so then it's like safe to wash it's not going to like make it's not going to make any colours on or anything mm. so it's like that's probably the way I, that's the easiest way to do it but if it comes to like printing uh, I usually make something I make a design on my phone or my laptop and then I print it off you've got to reverse it if you're using a white t-shirt you've got to reverse the image if you're using a black um, a black t-shirt the image just comes out the way it is but the way I usually do it is I usually make I take so if I was making the Resident Evil one, I usually scan a lot of my own stuff so I get the highest quality image and then print it off from there. And it's essentially like, oh, what the fuck is it called? I wrote it down because uh, the reason I found out about it is because the guy who I buy my t-shirts from, he told me about this way of printing that I've never even heard of. Uh, subliminal printing, that was it. Sublimation printing as well. Where it's like much more simplified but it's like a kind of, not really a lack in quality, but it's not like screen printed in that way where it's like you can't really have like multiple colours because it's usually do like, it's just like a, a full that you print on something rather than like a screen print and you would like screen print the full thing mm -hmm. yourself and add all the other colours individually and stuff. So sublimation printing is just like, you take the design you want, you flip it and then you put it on the t-shirt or your fabric and then you press it on with like, essentially like an incredibly hot iron and it will like transfer it onto your design or your t-shirt sorry it transfers so the way the I ink from the paper onto a t-shirt mm. just through heat yeah 
So Enjoy. that's it's like it gets your design will be printed on like a specific type of paper, which is like sublimation paper. Right. So then that way you can just press it onto your t-shirt. Right. So that's the way I do it. I just get I buy my I buy my sheets of paper off Amazon. You can buy like ones for dark fabrics or ones for light fabrics, and uh, it's literally just take. I make my design up, flip it, print it out, cut it all out, and then it's essentially laying up the ironing board. And then like laying my t-shirt out and then taking the image, lining it all up the way I wanted to. You have this kind of like sheet of paper that's kind of like kind of like a glossy, like acrylic kind of feel to it. Mm. You lay that on top and then you just iron it for like say two minutes and then peel it off slowly and that's it completely transfers onto your t-shirt for you. Right. It's, it's real fucking cool. Yeah, it's really simple to cool. Yeah. I love hearing stuff like this. Like this is so like I'm completely useless. So when I hear people doing stuff like that, I'm like, what? People do this. People actually use their hands and create things. Like I love hearing about that. Um, <laughs> I hope this is inspiring people to like go and try stuff like this out and get creative mm. and like I get hope so to advanced. That. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm tempted. I kind of wanted to. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm gonna have like a bunch of t-shirts that are just like scribbles on them though. <laughs> it's like yeah, I did yeah. it. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. anything can be valuable. You know what I mean? Like no matter like. And you can make anything valuable. It's somebody's. It's always going to be somebody's treasure. Mm. I mean, you, can, you could draw some scribbles all over something, and like say somebody like anyone could look at. Somebody could look at it and be like, "Why would you wear that?" But somebody mm. else would look at it and be like, "I'd wear that. That looks yeah. cool." And they'd pay you like ten quid for it. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, you're totally right. Everyone's got their own like aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, this is value. Everything essentially. Yeah. As uh, as like your aesthetic, something you take kind of seriously with like designing your own t-shirts and stuff like that, you want to have your own sort of distinctive, unique style? In a way, yes. Um, I, because I'm quite <laughs> a perfectionist, yeah. I like, I hate this whole like modern, the modern aesthetic and modern market for gaming and anime stuff is like big massive blotched images that take up like the full t-shirt and they're like an eyesore essentially you're just looking at it thinking why the fuck would you wear that it's horrible <laughs> so like I definitely love the old like 2000s and 90s like aesthetic of like less is more whenever like all the old anime t-shirts are very simple they'll have like one character with like a logo and then like a mm. logo on the, the back yeah so like the one thing I got from like a lot of really old anime shirts is like they do a lot of logos on the back of the neck, and like as well as like even on the sleeves and that. Mm -hmm. I used to do a lot of sleeve print because I feel like not many brands do yeah. it anymore. Sleeves are well so, underappreciated. Mm -hmm. I feel bad so for the I, I, I started doing a lot on the sleeves, and I do a lot on the neck as well. I think the neck is one of the coolest spots to put something yeah. on your t-shirt. So yeah, that's that's definitely the way I would say it. I'm just a perfectionist. I, I hate. Like, I take everyone way too seriously when I start designing something. If the slightest thing is wrong, if I print something and the slightest thing is wrong, I'll just throw the t-shirt out and print it all again. I hate I hate when something fucks up in the slightest bit. And I remember Andy, who is up next, he came round, and this was maybe like the third or fourth week of me trying to figure out how to do this printing. <clears throat> because before the printing, I was just hand drawing everything. <clears throat> And it was that way where we really wanted to do merch for Nest, but it was like, I'm not going to sit and draw 30 or 40 onto the same t-shirt, because it would just, I'll lose my mind, so I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kept looking into ways that we were going to get them printed from the guy that I buy my t-shirts from, but he told us the minimum he would do is like 100, mm -hmm. right, maybe a bit overkill, so we left it. And then he mentioned the subliminal printing, and I looked more into that. But I mean, even subliminal printing, that's not even what I do. It's, 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 a, it's a different type because it's basically just like iron-on transfers yeah. rather than like actual sublimation printing. It's the same aspect, but it's like a different way I'm doing it. So I had to like research all that by myself. And I remember like the first time I'd done it, I bought like, I bought a hundred sheets of sub, subliminal paper thinking that was what I was going for. And then put a design on it, printed it out, and of course it doesn't work because I've not got like an actual heat press printer, so it mm. doesn't fucking work at all. So Andy came round and we had spent ages, I had spent like three weeks just every day coming home from work thinking of ways to do all this printing, and I managed to work out how to do white t-shirts, but I could never do black t-shirts. So Andy, 
I only bought the, the, the sheets of paper for me and he came round and we sat in my room at like 6 o'clock until like 10 o'clock just trying to print one t-shirt. We eventually got it and then that was like, like why we made those nest shirts. We got really so excited. We're like, we're going to just do our run of like 30 of these. It'll be so good. So wait, how do you how do you create like, can you just create one uh, image and then constantly reprint it or how do you like keep yeah. that consistent? So you just create one image yeah. and then you can just re repress that one? Well, the way I think I, I've completely missed out that actual crucial information is basically <laughs> you, I, I make I make the image and I print it out. So as long as you have like an inkjet printer, yeah. you can you can print, you can just print your image out and then you cut all of it out and then you lay it on the t-shirt how you want it to look and right. then you iron and transfer it over. So do you make so the image by hand first or do you make it in like Photoshop or something? Oh no no no! Like basically use it on like Photoshop. I'll like gather. I'll find images online of the photos I want, or if I can't find them online, I'll scan them from like because I've got yeah. a scanner as well. So I just scan like photos and then use right. them that way. And, and create the composition in Photoshop. Yeah, right. you know, like a Photoshop uh, like style app. Oh, pardon me. And then make all the image and then send it to my printer and print it out. So it's just like if some if I've got the image saved on my phone, I just send it to my printer and then just like print out as many as I need. It's so fascinating, man. Um, like. I, I don't know. I, I feel like for like anyone outside that sort of like community or culture, it's like ah, oh, just like t-shirts. They have stuff on them, and that's it. Like there's no, there's no connection there. But then as soon as you like dive into this culture, you realize, oh wait, that's this, 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 and there's this way, and there's that aspect, and you need to think about this, and like there's just tons. And I bet if we talked about this more, you would be like layers and layers down and deep, yeah. and like how this all yeah, works totally. and the full psyche of it. How illegal is it to do like, to copy uh, titles and stuff like that on t-shirts? Well, I don't know. I've never had a, I've never <laughs> had a problem with it. So, uh, my mom shits herself every time I do it. So, um, yeah, I feel quite bad. But I don't, I don't post it. And then, like, I don't really make it that public. The way, the way I post it is like, for instance, I made a Neon Genesis t-shirt. And I like when I post it online, I wrote neon, and then like the E was a three, so it wouldn't come up if people searched for it. And then like the the E in Genesis, and then the fa- the S in Genesis are five, so right. it was kind of it's kind of hard to trace. So you're keeping yourself did, like off the radar. Yeah, I'm keeping off the radar a lot, and then um, I don't do like awfully big drops either. So mm-hmm. it's not like it's not like I'm going to have a hundred of them sitting on my big cartel for like yeah. three years which is like prime suspect to pick me up on because yeah. <laughs> I've got so many of them so like the Neon Genesis one I made I only made uh, six of them and they I nearly sold out within like the first like 40 minutes them being up which was mad look at that but, yeah. on that but note well. do you want to plug all your stuff and get it out there and like tell the people oh, where to get you I need to go on my <laughs> phone and actually look up my name uh, yeah, sure. My Instagram is just Maximo underscore, which is M A C S I M O underscore, which is like my whole account dedicated to like my hobbies. So, like PlayStation stuff, PlayStation 2 stuff, anything gaming and sprinkles of anime. And then um, I have Maximo underscore shop, which is just spelled the same way. Which is where I was selling a lot of like promotional T-shirts that I sourced. But if you actually go on to it, a lot, of it, it's literally like I've only got nine posts. I think six of them are just me saying, "Yeah, it's not for sale. This is from my personal collection." <laughs> so I really need to update the store and actually sell some stuff. <laughs> Your yeah. store is just showing off. <laughs> Here's some <laughs> things I own. <laughs> uh, you can follow me at nest.cast as well, which is where we do our gaming podcast. And I do shirts for Nest as well, so you can always buy a shirt for Nest. But yeah, I think that's about it. Awesome. Um, so, is there any anything you want to bring up before we go, or is there any like final closing words? I don't know. I think that's pretty much it. Just, just, that's it. <laughs> Guys, yeah, have, have a good so. life. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything else to bring up. No. Nothing. Mm-hmm. This this Go podcast ahead. is not like P 
pure explosion now. It's like just kind of fizzling out. It's like, okay, bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> yeah, just kind of sizzling and then going out slowly. But yeah, it was awesome to speak to you and it was really fascinating like hearing about the full process behind it and, and all that kind of stuff. So I appreciate you talking about it. No, thanks so much for having me because it was nice to talk about it. Because it is like that way where you say people just see it as like merch for Nest or mm. me just doing shirts they don't actually yeah. hear the way I do it. Yeah. Well, that's and what I I'm all like. noticed, I've noticed that rise in a lot of people doing like hand-drawn t-shirts like nowadays. Yeah. And I'm not saying like I started it because I didn't start that <laughs> at all. I obviously got inspired from it from other people doing it. But I mean like I know a lot of like friends that are doing it and I know a lot of people like in the scene are doing it mm. as well. So it is definitely like becoming a lot more. A growing community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is really cool. I know a lot of like skate companies are doing it as well, which is really nice. It's like mm-hmm. obviously not a lot of companies can get t-shirts and stuff in, so I know some guys are just dot drawing their own shit and selling it as well. So it's definitely growing. It was just I. That's just how I was doing it because I physically didn't know how the fuck I print stuff. Yeah. So it was literally like my way of dealing with it until I found the way to print. And now I found my way to print, so everything I do is just going. Awesome. Well, thanks again, and I hope you have a good isolation. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much for having me.